for the lesson. Uh, today is the second lesson in our series called Jesus is for Everyone. And last week, Rachel shared with you how that Jesus spent the time with Nicodemus telling him about how, being, how to be born again and how Nicodemus was a little confused about that. And she also shared how that Jesus loves you so much that he wants to spend time with you and that he died on the cross for you so that he could do that. And today we're going to be talking about how that we can share God's grace with others. And today at the end of our lesson, be watching for the game that you can play with your family. And you have to watch the lesson so that you can know the uh, answers to the questions that are in the game. So Emma, Alexa, Bentley, are you guys ready to get into our lesson today? All right, then, here we go. Hi there, I'm Madison, and I'm your host for this series, Jesus is for Everyone. Ever known someone who had done something bad, and I mean really bad? Maybe they robbed an old lady on the side of the road. Doesn't that just make you mad? Or maybe they beat up a little kid at school. Aren't bullies so mean? Yeah. If you're like me, when someone does something terrible like this, you want them to get caught and get punished bad. After all, punishment is what they deserve, right? Sometimes we can get so mad at the person who did wrong that all we can think about is what they deserve. But aren't you glad that God doesn't focus on what we deserve when we sin? The Bible is clear that all of us have sinned. Romans 6.23 says, the payment of sin is death. That's what we deserve. But God sent His Son Jesus to pay that price for us. Instead of punishment, we get grace. Grace. Grace is the unconditional love and forgiveness God gives that you don't deserve and could never earn. Remember, Jesus is for everyone, even those who have sinned. Today, you guys are going to hear a Bible story where Jesus truly demonstrated what grace was all about. The woman in the story was definitely guilty, but instead, Jesus showed her grace, which was more than the religious people ever showed. But I won't spoil the story for you. So sit back and listen carefully as you guys learn an incredible lesson about how you and I should be grace givers, just like Jesus. This is going to be amazing. Until next time, this is Madison reminding you that Jesus is for everyone. Peeps, it's me, the SKI to the double T L E S. Skittles in the his head, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how to treat people who have sinned. So, every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will show God's grace to others. Some Christians, they go about it all wrong. They treat sinners like they got some kind of disease. Oh, you're a sinner. My mama says I can't hang around you because I might catch some of your cooties. Ew. But that ain't the way it is. No, we're supposed to love and care for people, even sinners. After all, we all have sinned at some point. Don't be hating on people. Be a grace giver, baby. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up? You tell them, I will show God's grace to others. And that what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby, yeah. Today, I am going to share a story with you that is true. And it's from the Bible, and it's found in John chapter 8. One day Jesus was teaching some people about God and right in the middle of his teaching, a group of Pharisees showed up. And the Pharisees were considered the religious leaders of Jesus' day and they were the ones who were to set the good example for the people to live by. And their way was considered the spiritual way. 
Not only did the Pharisees show up themselves, but they brought a woman with them. And this woman had done some very bad things. She was being the girlfriend of some men who were already married. Not only was she sinning, but she was helping others to sin as well. So the religious people brought her to Jesus. One of the Pharisees said to Jesus, The law says we should stone her. What do you say? Well, to stone someone meant that you take a bunch of large rocks and throw them at the person over and over until they die. Boy, isn't that mean? These Pharisees wanted to deal with this woman very harshly. So they asked Jesus, What do you say we are to do with her? They were trying to trap Jesus. They knew he was a man of love and compassion. They knew he was kind and gentle to others. So what did Jesus do? Well, he said nothing. Instead, he bent down and began to write in the dirt with his finger. Have you ever done that? Have you ever written in the sand, maybe your name, or while you were out playing, just wrote in the dirt? Well, that's what Jesus did. But the Bible doesn't say what he was writing. But when he was done, he looked up and said, Whichever one of you has never sinned, throw the first stone at her. Hmm, what do you think the Pharisees did? One by one, they began to drop their stones and walk away. Why do you think they walked away? It was because they knew that all of them had sinned. They didn't want that kind of judgment on themselves, so they weren't about to give that kind of judgment to the woman. Jesus wanted to display an attitude of grace toward others, even those who had sinned. Instead of harsh punishment, Jesus forgave the woman. He gently spoke to the woman and said, Go and leave your life of sin. All right, it's time for the Power Verse with Disco Dan Groovy. What's up, everybody? My name's Disco Dan. I'm here to teach you today's power verse. It's totally out of sight. Today's power verse says, Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3.13. Ooh, that power verse was smoking. Now here's what I need you to do. I need all the boys in the room. Come on, all of you, stand up to your feet, and we can say the power verse together. Come on, stand up, stand up. Here we go, on the count of three. One, two, Three! Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3.13 Groovy job, boys! You can take a seat. Now I need my girls. Come on, stand up, stand up real tall and strong now. And say the power verse with me, uh, Disco Dan, on the count of three. Are you ready? I hope so, because here we go. <laughs> and one, a two, and a three. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3.13 Ooh, that power verse was amazing. You all can take a seat. Now, this power verse is a very important one. It reminds me of something that I was going through just the other day. You see, us dancers, we have a very specific diet that we have to stick to. And one of my good friends, Cha Cha Charlie, mm, let me tell you, I caught him eating a ham sandwich. A ham sandwich. You can't eat no ham sandwich if you're a dancer. And I said, Cha Cha Charlie, what you doing? You eating a ham sandwich. But then I had to remember, <laughs> I was eating a Swiss cheese and bologna sandwich just a few days before. You can't eat that either. How was I supposed to blame him for eating that when I had done it just the other day? I asked him to forgive me for eating my Swiss cheese and I said, Cha-Cha Charlie, I'll forgive you for eating a ham sandwich because God gives grace freely. And so now I think we all need to stand up together and say the power verse, everybody now on the count of three. Come on, stand up and say it with me. One, two, three. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3.13. 
Oh yeah, good job, good job. You can take a seat. Man, that power verse was dynamite. Now I hate to bum you out, but disco dance gotta fly. <laughs> I'll see you boys and girls next time when we learn another groovy power verse. Until then, my name's Disco Dan, and I am out of sight. Whoa! <laughs>
and then we'll judge them and say that they need to be punished. And in fact, they do, just like we did. But what we need to do is we need to drop the rocks and we need to not make them feel any worse than what they probably already do about themselves. And we need to have the same attitude and be more like Jesus. So let's drop the rocks and quit talking bad about those who are being bad. Instead, let us pray for them and love them and give them grace. Remember, we were guilty too, and but God gave us grace. We didn't deserve it, but he gave it to us anyway. And so let's be like Jesus. Let's stop being rock throwers and let's be grace givers. Well, kids, I want to pray with you right now. And for those of you who have never asked Jesus into your heart, you can do that right now. And all you have to do is believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. And then just ask him to forgive you for all the bad things that you have done. And he will. He'll do that right now. And then while we're praying for all of us who want to become more like Jesus, and we don't want to be those rock throwers, but those grace givers, let's ask Jesus to do, to do that for us right now. Bow your heads. Dear Jesus, we just uh, thank you that you give us grace and that you forgive us of our sins. And for those that are praying and asking you right now to come into their heart and to forgive them for all the bad things that, they're do that they have done, I pray that you do that. And God, I ask that you help all of us, that we will not be uh, rock throwers, that we will not talk bad or have uh, bad thoughts about those people who are doing bad, that we will pray for them and that we will give them grace and love them and be more like you. That's what you would do. So Father, forgive us if we have done that. And God, I just thank you that you have given us grace. You are a good God, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you've given your heart to uh, Jesus, please let us know in the comments below. Wiggity, 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 yo! What's up? Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-bye-